Hello, Gemini viewers. I'm going to be looking into what your person is thinking, feeling. i um, just going to see what's going on with your love life. Last video I did, I think I was getting um, the energy of like an unstable, kind of toxic, maybe abusive situation or relationship. And then there was another person that was a secret admirer, but you, they, you weren't really completely noticing them. Like, I think maybe they weren't your type or... You might have been worried that the relationship would be boring or that they just wouldn't be enough for you. Um, and then, like, a lot of the energy of that video was, I think the title I put was, Do You Find Stable, Healthy Relationships Boring? Because that, that was the energy that I really highly picked up, is that you had this, this pattern with men or women that you kept repeating. And you had one or two good people around you that were trying to get your attention, but you just didn't really... They weren't your type, so you weren't really completely noticing them. Um, so let's see what we get today with the cards. Let's see how that energy has played out. Because I saw somebody, I think I saw some. I think in that reading I was saying I saw somebody coming back around. And like this secret admirer was, was going to, you know, develop some courage because he would see this other man coming back around and get jealous. So let's see how that played out. Let's see how that's all going. All right, what's going on with your person? This could be a soulmate, twin flame, um, past relationship, current, new person coming in. Let's just see what, what, what the cards say. Okay, so for the Gemini viewers, what is going on? What's going on? What does your person want to say? Sorry you can't read these. Um, I don't know why they never show up very clearly on camera for some reason. So your empathy and your openness draws me to you. I love your willingness to be honest and vulnerable. Your heart is pure. So somebody is really noticing your personality and um, they're, they're very drawn to you. I am unsure of what I want right now. So that's kind of that flaky energy, um, that like toxic hot and cold relationship that I think I was getting the last reading. Clear out your chakras to allow love to manifest in the physical realm. So I think this is talking about like doing cut and clear work and just like healing work and um, and doing some meditation and chakra clearing and especially the root chakra. I trust you. I feel like I've known you my entire life. It's time to live. It's time to go out and meet new people. So it's kind of time to start noticing the people around you and not just staying in this pattern forever because, you you know, you don't want to just get out of one relationship and then go back to somebody who's just like that same person you were just dating. You know what I mean? Like you want to make sure you break this pattern and you meet like a new type of person um, and you notice good people and don't just keep going for the same type of guy. Um, your independence, confidence, and strength draws me to you. Call on our guides. Call for divine intervention. This is a potent time for spells and for rituals. Hmm. This one's interesting. Call for divine intervention. Yeah, there might be some stuff going on in the astral realm with you guys where you might need to kind of step up and, and take charge there, it looks like. I am overcome by nostalgia and heartache. My heart has not yet healed. So this person is going through their own... Um, you know, emotional battle. I feel like this person isn't fully, they're, they're not completely stable themselves and they're kind of, their energy is a bit chaotic too. Okay, so for Geminis, show me what is going on. The Gemini viewers that are watching, show me what's going on with their love lives. What's going on with their love lives? What is going on with your love life? So what do we need to know about their love, love life right now? What's going on with your love life? The Hermit. Okay. Five of Wands. 
Five of Pentacles, interesting. The Three of Swords, Ooh, interesting, okay. Four of Pentacles, don't worry, it's okay. It's not a bad reading. It's not a bad reading, it'll be fine. Hmm. Interesting. So we've got the Hermit, the Five of Wands, the Five of Pentacles, the Three of Swords, the Four of Pentacles, the Eight of Pentacles, and the Ten of Wands. So I think this is kind of talking about where you're at in your life and you're letting go of this heavy burden that's been weighing you down. It doesn't mean, this does not mean future heartache necessarily. I think this is where you're at right now where you're kind of sad over this past energy, you're sad over this past, but you're wanting to, hmm, I'll have to pull some additional cards and get some clarity on this. It's kind of like you're wanting to move forward, I feel. So I think this is kind of referring to, I think a lot of this reading is referring to your past and where you're headed. See, with the Hermit and the Five of Wands here, well, the Hermit, the Five of Wands, and the Five of Pentacles, actually. Um, you were... You were kind of in isolation, I feel, for a period of time. I think you're starting to come out of that isolation. But it's like you were in this isolation over this this energy, this person, where it's like you guys both kind of wanted to talk to each other, but neither one of you were budging. You know, like, look at her. She's, like, kind of sulking and pouting, and, like, he's pretending like he doesn't see it. And he's, they're both, like, distracting themselves with, like, work or day-to-day -day life. And just kind of pretending like that love isn't there. They're they're both kind of in denial and not acknowledging this connection. Um, but it's, I mean, it's, like, I think you are acknowledging the connection. But I think it's, like, how do I even describe that energy? It's such a strange energy. Um, I guess I should say you are more at, like, a loss of what to do about this connection is probably the right way to put that. It's like you're sad and you're sulking about it. And this person's kind of sad over you too. But you guys are like not communicating well or you're not communicating at all. It's one or the other. It's either miscommunication or it's a complete lack of communication. I feel like for a lot of you, I feel like it's probably like complete silence or like, you know, very like random texts or calls, but nothing, nothing consistent. Um, and with the hermit, it's like you were kind of isolating because of this person, because of this energy. It's like you didn't want to, you were just sad. You were depressed. You didn't really want to be around other people. It was just all too much. And with the five of pentacles here, you had like lost maybe some financial issues, um, anxiety with the three of swords. It's like, this is the energy you're kind of in now where you're kind of just heartbroken and, and at a loss of what to do about this connection. And... And I think you're realizing you need to let go of the dead weight. So, like, I'm I'm being led to not use the traditional meaning of this card and more look at her face. Like, she looks bored. She's, like, waiting. She's longing for this person, but she's bored. She's, she's tired of the stagnant energy. She's tired of going back and forth. She's tired of the loneliness. Um, and she wants to work on herself more. She wants to focus on her skills and hobbies and career and, like, the things that she loves. She wants to be happy again. She wants to find herself again. And she's got to let go of this dead weight, these heavy burdens, you know, like she's realizing it's time. It's like it's weighing heavily on her and she doesn't want to keep doing this to herself. She wants to get out of, um, she wants to get out of that energy. She doesn't want to stay in that, that, you know, isolated hermit, lonely, three of swords kind of energy anymore. She wants to move forward. Okay, I'm bringing my pendulum out. So I want to see what pull cards to pull next. Um, okay, so before we got there, there's two people. Is there's like a toxic or emotionally unavailable ex? Is that person still coming back around? Yes, getting a yes to that. Is there also a secret admirer around right now too that's going to be stepping up? Yeah, it's that same energy where he's going to see that this other person is is getting your attention and he's going to want to step up. See, my Facebook is going off too, so you're getting a message, I think, from somebody. Or you're getting a confession of feelings, I think. Um, but they might, they might be kind of 
hesitant or you know they kind of they have they have this awareness that that you know they might not be your type so i kind of feel like they're gonna wait and when they see this other guy coming in or they see this other energy or they realize that you're going out and going on dates or meeting new people i think that's when they're probably gonna like start to they're gonna get scared of losing you i think um do you guys have more than one secret admirer that's like a maybe so I think for some of you, there's actually two secret admirers, and for others, there's just one. For the majority of you, is the secret admirer a good option? Seems like there's some confusion. I think they are a good, a good option for the most part, but some of you might not be used to them. Okay, so I'm going to look into... Hmm. What cards do I want to use? Oh, shit, okay, I guess all my cards fall out, so I guess those are the ones I'm using. One second. <laughs> cards keep getting all turned around, too. I need to try to organize them better. So I'm putting the intention in of not reading any of these upside down. All right. Let's see what we've got. Okay, so I'm going to look into both people. So for the ex that's coming back, I'm going to look into him first. So tell me about this ex that's coming back, the Gemini viewers. Tell me what this, what's, what's he bringing to the table? What's going on with that connection? What do we need to know about that? Your ex in my back. Page of Cups, Eight of Cups. See how seductive this energy is? I don't know if I trust that. You know what I mean? Look at her. Look at that mermaid. She's like, she's not a, I don't know if she's a good mermaid. She looks kind of like more like a siren that's waiting to sing her song to you and then drown you <laughs> seven of cups seven of swords ten of wands again see that's that burden that we, we saw earlier that burden and you got to use your intuition you got to use the moon your intuition to get out of that energy and figure out like oh let me see so justice the two of cups seven of wands okay sorry you can't see that i'll try to Put it over here more. Okay, so Page of Cups, Eight of Cups, Seven of Swords, Ten of Wands, the Moon, Justice, Two of Cups, Seven of Wands. I almost feel like I, I do, like for this group, I really do get that pattern with like abusive and emotionally unavailable relationships that you have to break if you ever want to be happy, you know? Like you got to step outside your comfort zone sometimes because I just keep feeling that it's like, think in the past, you're like, well, I was told to follow my heart, and I did follow my heart, and it's like, but you didn't, though, you know, like, for this group, it's like, you guys were following your mind, you were following, like, lust, and seduction, and, like, your, your childhood patterns, and, like, these subconscious patterns that were leading you to these abusive, emotionally unavailable people, it's, it's, like, subconscious, it's body language, it's, like, when you meet somebody, and there's, like, that instant, physical attraction it's like their body language and you feel in your soul that something's off you know what I mean like all the good guy like I I you know most a lot of women have that that pattern you know I had that pattern a long time ago too and I've been breaking it I've gotten better I still tend to end up in, in tricky complicated situations with men that are kind of emotionally unavailable but I I have over time you know gotten way way better like and come a long way from where I used to be with men so I'm definitely attracting much better men and I'll just say that that the good man that I've um attracted it was always like a soul-based connection you know what I mean it's like there'd be like a little bit of attraction there at first but they weren't my usual type but there was like this curiosity or there was just this like they just had good energy like like I just felt good around them like I felt like their eyes would light up when I was around them or they would just they just had good energy and it's like I would develop you know they weren't my usual type at first but it's like after talking and getting to know each other I would um you know have soul recognition where I would remember my past lives with them 
Um, cause you know, with soulmates, you have multiple soulmates that you can be happy with. So with like soulmate connections, you know, that weren't my usual type. It's like, there wasn't that, that physical attraction there at first completely, but there was like a little bit of a physical attraction and like a curiosity and like, like getting to know them, like getting to know their personality and seeing how sweet and empathetic and loving they were and just having these deep heart to heart talks with them and just having them know me and just being able to be my true free spirited self with them was such a turn on. And it's like, it made that physical attraction develop. You know what I mean? Like I've always heard that with other people too, that, you know, you want to marry your best friend. You want to marry the person that's like, that just gets you, that you can be your true self with. You want to marry somebody that you're just kind of attracted to at first and then it it develops genuinely. That attraction develops based on a soul connection. You know, you have soul recognition. You remember your past lives with them. Um, so you, if you, you know, you got you to gotta keep that in mind when meeting people, like really develop your intuition. Your intuition is what's going to get you out of all this, this Ten of Wands energy. You got you to gotta develop your intuition more. Um when it comes to, to being able to read abusive and emotionally unavailable people, um, men and women. And, um, you know, again, like, you know, toxic relationships are in your mind. They're not in your heart and soul. You know what I mean? It's that subconscious pattern repeating and that familiarity and that, that repeated energy that, that's just familiar to you. But like soul level relationships, like really following your heart, it's just a much different feeling. Like if you compare the two, if you compare soul based relationships to, you know, mental based relationships based on on your patterns that you have with men, it's it's like a way different energy. It's a way different feeling. So learn how to recognize that energy. Learn how to really use your intuition so that you don't just keep going on default and keep, you know, being drawn to these guys that are, are no good for you. You know, you don't want to keep self-sabotaging. Um, anyway, so it's just, so yeah, just putting that out there. You can follow your heart. You can follow your soul. You should do those things. It's your mind. It's your patterns that you got to stop following now. Um, all right. So let me get into the reading. Sorry. Just need to put that out there for some of you. See, I feel like this is a situation that already ended. Like, look at this seductive energy. This is like your person. It's like they might have been cheating or there might have been like some lust and seduction type energy going on. Like it wasn't It's kind of like what I was just saying. It was more mental and physical than it was emotional and spiritual, you know, like this was like a mental, physical relationship, like familiar kind of energy, I feel. Um, and it's like you wanted to start a new life with them. You wanted them to come away with you, but it's like, they're just, they're so seductive, but they're not seductive in a positive way. You know, it's like, they're charming, but it's like a, it's like a narcissistic charm. It's not good. Um, you might've left them at some point. You might've said, screw this, I'm done and, and walked out or they might've left you. Somebody left somebody and it was kind of chaotic. I feel, um, with the sound of swords, it's like, it's like a very, flaky energy someone was like screw it you know like look at look at this energy that's like got her hands up she's just like screw all of it i'm done um come at me and it's almost like see look how sad this ten of wands is and i kind of feel like you kind of fell for this charm you fell for that that seduction that oh come start a new life with me energy like oh like like glamour you know this person might be really glamorous this person might be really um like really cares about their physical appearance, you know, like they have a good style. I think it's, it could be that kind of energy for some of you. Um, and it's like with the page and the eight of cups here, it's in the Son of swords. It's like some, like you realize it's not stable. You realize with this, you realize that the energy is not stable. It's not, it was more superficial than you realized. And you know, you got the 10 of wands here and you're realizing now that this is dead weight and you don't want to keep doing this to yourself. And with the moon, look at the moon. She's not looking here. She's not looking at this energy. She's looking forward. She's looking to the future. She's trying to leave the past behind and she's trying to develop her intuition and, um, you know, do what's right for her. And with justice, I do think this person might be coming back around to give you an apology or try to try to talk to you again. They might be coming in with the, with the two of cups here. They might be coming in with some kind of love offer, I feel. Um, 
wanted to make things right. But like, look at her. She's like, she's kind of looking in the past, but then part of her is like, you know, I want to look forward. I think there's better out there for me. I don't know about this. I don't know if I want to go back to that energy again. I don't know if I want to do that to myself again. I think I kind of don't want to. Um, but you have some justice. You have some clarity. This could be closure too for some of you. It could just be closure coming in. But for others, I think it's like a love offer that's going to be coming in. But you got to be more intuitive. And the thing is, this person is still defensive. This person might be coming in with a love offer, but um, that doesn't mean that they have opened their heart completely. You know what I mean? Like they might open their heart at first and they might say like, oh, I'm sorry I did this. Like, please take me back or like, let's try to work through this. But if this was a toxic, if this is your reading, you should know probably and you'll probably if, like this is a toxic person. You won't have any doubt about that. You know, if this is your reading, then you will not have any doubt that this person was toxic for you and that they were no good for you. Um, and with the seven of wands, it's almost like they try to come back in, but they only open their heart temporarily. They open their heart just enough to get you back on the hook and, and win you over again. And then they go back to the seven of wands energy where they're like defensive and competitive and argumentative and nitpicky and emotionally unavailable and hot and cold and distant and just like guarded, just guarded, you know, just not what you want out of a relationship. So yes, you do have a love offer probably coming in from this person, but it's like a short-lived honeymoon phase. Like if you guys got back together, maybe a couple months where things are good and then they go back to this seven of wands energy. So you, you got to consider that and you got to look at your patterns for sure. So I'm going to look into the secret admirer. Or again, for some of you, you got two admirers. So Let's see what that energy says. I'll just do one of them now. Or I'll just, I'll see who comes out. Let's see. Okay, so the secret admirer. And I feel like the secret admirer might actually be a soul-based relationship. Because I think you're kind of curious about them. I don't think that you're like completely, I mean, part of me is like, oh, maybe you did friend zone them. But I think part of you is kind of curious, but it's like an unfamiliar energy to you. For some of them, they might not have come forward. They could just be like stalking you on social media and they're just like, they're not sure if they can come forward or not. But um, for a lot of you, I think you might know who this person is, but it's just not familiar to you, but it's, it's a good energy that I feel. It really is. So let's see. And again, I put the intention in of not reading these cards upside down. I just need to get my cards straightened out. <laughs> so tell me about this secret admirer for my Gemini viewers. about the secret admirer. What's going on with him? Hope. See, hope. Hope for a new start. You know, they have hope that that maybe this risk with you would be worth it if they take that chance with you. They want to talk to you. Um, they want to communicate. They're just not sure. They're kind of, they're kind of hesitant. They're just kind of hesitant. And I think once they see this other guy come in though, I think they're going to get jealous and they're going to come forward and they're going to be honest with you about how they feel about you. I think that they've been holding back their feelings. I think it might be coming out in like subtle ways. Like maybe if it's like someone from your friend group, like maybe light flirting or like just being like that person that's just always there for you. You can call them in the middle of the night and they're just always there. They drop everything for you. It's kind of like little hints like that. They're like, oh wait, does this person like actually like me? Like, is there feelings here? Um, so I think they're going to be, they're going to take that risk and they're going to be more honest with you about, um, how they feel, you know, they have hope. They're kind of just dreaming about you right now and wondering if this could go somewhere. Could be a water sign possibly, um, or just water energy where they, I think they want you to heal a lot. I think that this is someone who's, who wants to be, who either is supportive of you or they want to be supportive of you. Like they wish that they were closer to you and that they were in a position where they could be more supportive of you. So it could be a water sign, but it could also just be water energy, like healing and emotional depth and cleansing and purging and just like, you know, just wanting you to heal. Like they want the best for you. They want, they, they know, they see that you're damaged. So I kind of feel like it's somebody who knows you because it's like they know whether they're seeing your posts on social media or they're hearing about you from friends or they're, um, 
like talking to you, whatever it might be. I just think that they know that you've been hurt a lot. Like they know who you are. Like they know that you, you've been, you're, you're, you know, you have this damage and, um, with, you know, could also be an earth sign, high priestess of earth, but, um, with the high priestess of earth, I think it's mostly talking about water and earth energy, which is like, this is like, this is very cleansing energy and very like healing and grounding, you know, and protective energy that they want to bring into your life. Um, and success, this would be a successful relationship if you gave it a chance. It is a risk because it's not what you're used to. It's unfamiliar. Um, but you have to, you know, with that moon card that we were seeing earlier, you really need to develop your intuition and you need to learn how to read people better and you need to learn how to balance better and, um, and, and choose the people that are actually right for you on a soul level. And, and yes, this relationship would be either a soulmate or a twin flame. It would be successful if you gave it a chance. And, you know, you've been trapped, I think, in this old energy. And I kind of feel like at first you might actually feel trapped because you might, like, kind of fight with yourself where you're like, this is, like, not familiar to me. What is this? What's going on? Why is this person so nice? Why is this person bringing me flowers? Why is this person there for me? It's almost like you have this tendency to self-sabotage. Um, and you don't want to trap yourself. You don't want to trap yourself anymore. You want to open this cage and let yourself fly. Um, I feel a strong connection to birds for you guys, too, actually. But you, you want to take that risk and you want to get out of this cage. It's like a, it's like the Eight of Swords energy. It's like a self-imposed cage. Like you're caging yourself. You're the only one that's caging yourself. And you're the only one that's stopping yourself from having success and, and true love right now with this with this other energy. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just a matter of getting out of your head and getting into your soul and into your heart and, and using your intuition. But yeah, I do feel like this person is coming forward with an honest... Um, some some he's trying to he or she is trying to be more honest and forward about how they feel but they're kind of awkward about it but they think they're trying to get your attention and they're trying to like give you subtle hints here and there and you're either ignoring them or you're not really completely seeing them or understanding what they are or maybe you're analyzing them but you're not sure if it's actual feeling but but yeah they're going to try to i think they're going to come in and be more honest with you or they're wanting to at least um they're wanting to have that honest, deep talk with you. And I, I do think that, you know, that ex is coming back around and they really don't want to see you. This is someone who is very protective and very loyal and very loving to you. Um, I'm just wondering, because I think some of you know who this is and others of you, I almost feel like this person is like that way in their head, but they don't express it enough. It's almost like they see your posts and you're, they're like, oh my God, she deserves so much more. Why does she feel that way? Why does she feel sad? Why is she going back to that horrible person? Like, she deserves so much more. I wish I could give her the world. It's it's that kind of energy. Um, but I, I think when the ex comes back around, I think that this guy is going to get really jealous. And the intention is to come forward. Whether he'll do it or not, you never know. But I think he's his intention there is, the energy I'm feeling is, is that there's a good chance that he will be more forward because he's going to be afraid of losing you to this person. And he definitely does not want to see you get your heart broken again, um, by this, by this person. So, so there's that. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. If this resonates, let me know. Thank you.